Welcome back, class. Today, what we're going to be discussing is the axis of symmetry for quadratic function. Now, what our goal today is to be able to understand what the axis of symmetry is, how to find out the axis of symmetry from x intercepts, and also how to find the axis of um, symmetry from a equation, like a function equation. Okay? So, by the end of today, you will be able to do all those things. So, let us begin. What exactly is an axis of symmetry? Well, very simple. Axis of symmetry is the vertical line, that means the line that goes up and down, of a quadratic function of your parabola um, that both sides are symmetrical about. So pretty much what happens is when you put the axis of symmetry in here, each side is the same distance away. So if I took the same pieces, the same y values, each x value would be the same distance away. All right? So it's the... Um, Axis of symmetry is vertical. Its equation will have the form of an axis of symmetry. It also makes a, because it's vertical, it makes a right angle with the x-axis, so it's parallel to the y-axis, okay? And its form is simply x equals k. There is no y-intercept, right? And k is just a number. There is, the slope is zero, okay? All vertical lines have a zero slope. Remember, horizontal line, the slope is undefined. Vertical line is the slope is zero. Okay? So y equals or x equals k. Okay, the reason for that is y2 um, and y1 are the same. Am I doing alright? Actually the slope's undefined. Because if I took two points on here, okay, say this point was like um, 6, 2, and this point was say 5, 2. Right? My slope would be 6 minus 5, which is 1, over 2 minus 2, which is 0, so it's undefined. So I lied to you, the vertical line has a undefined slope. Anyway, its slope is undefined, so that's why I just put x equals k. If it was a horizontal slope, a horizontal line, it would be y equals k. Got it? All right, so a quadratic has two x-intercepts, that the axis of symmetry lies halfway between them. Okay, so if there's two x-intercepts here, one, two. This axis of symmetry is halfway between the two. That means the distance between them is equal. So the distance from the axis of symmetry to the first x-intercept is equal to the distance of, from the axis of symmetry to the second x-intercept. Sorry, it's been a long day of teaching, and then I had targeted learning, and now I have this. Whew, the brain, the brain does what the brain does. All right, so look at example 11. This is on page 20 of the packet. Um, what it says is find the equation of the axis of symmetry for the following quadratic functions. Here's the first one. So we said before, we said the axis of symmetry lies halfway between the two x-intercepts. Well, we have an x-intercept at 1 and at 1 at 5. So the x-intercepts here are at 1 and 5. That's where they cross the x-axis. Now, what number is halfway between them? Well, the way you find out is 3 is halfway between 1 and 5. So the axis of symmetry is 3. Now the reason I know that is 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. It's like taking the average. You add them together and you divide by 2. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 3. You plot this on here. This is 1, 2, 3. You put a dashed line right there. And there you go. All there is to it. What if I get a situation like B where there's only one x-intercept? This graph just touches the x -ax axis, the x axis. So what do you think the y-intercept is, or what do you think the axis of symmetry is here? Correct. Since the x-intercept is two, well, what's the average of two? Well, it's just two. Since it just touches here, that means that this is the vertice, okay? This is the vertice, axis of symmetry runs through that vertice, so it's x equals two. So if you just have one x-intercept, that's what your axis of symmetry is. If you have two x-intercepts, and them together divide by two, that's what your axis of symmetry is. If you have more than two x-intercepts, you're in trouble because you can't have more than two x-intercepts with a quadratic. If you have zero x-intercepts, that is a possibility, but you're gonna to have to use a different way in order to solve this stuff, all right? So, why don't you guys do A through F on your own and see what the axis of symmetries of each function is. 
All right, I gave you enough time there. There's no number here, but it goes to the origin, so obviously it's zero. All right, since this is zero, this is six, you add the two numbers together. Zero plus six is six. Six divided by two is three, so the axis of symmetry is three. Now I would like you to draw them for each graph too. If you haven't done that, pause and let's go through graph. Graph, this one. Negative five in the origin, so negative five plus zero. Negative five divided by two is 2.5, or negative five halves, or negative two and a half. All those are true. That's where my axis of symmetry is. And it's always x equals that, because that's what makes it a vertical line. I have three numbers here, negative one, negative two, and three. What are my two x-intercepts, though? Just negative one and three. Negative two is my y-intercept. It does not matter what the y-intercept is. We don't care. It doesn't even matter. This is just like a tricky thing to mess you up. So you just take your negative one plus three, you add them together, you get two. Two divided by two is one, and that's what my access is, or symmetry. All right, letter D. Negative seven plus negative one, or negative seven minus one is negative eight. Negative eight divided by two is negative four. And there is my axis of symmetry. Here, negative three, no, negative three is the y-intercept, so that doesn't matter. We only have one x-intercept because it touches the axis, so our answer is x equals three. That's pretty easy. Same way that we did this one right here. This two doesn't matter, we don't care about the y-axis uh, intercept. We just care that the x-intercept is negative four. And since there's only one, that's what the axis of symmetry is, this one. And there you go. All right, let me get off screen here. So you can go look, make sure you got all these correct answers, which you do. And now we will fast forward to the next one. Now we're going to deal with, oh no, functions. Okay, graphs are easy because you can see it makes sense. Here, it's one extra step. Now we did this in a previous lesson. We were able to find the x-intercepts from different graphs, right? From different functions. Remember how to find the x-intercept here? What you do is you set y equal to zero and you solve, right? So to find the x-intercepts, what you're doing is you're gonna set y equal to zero and you're gonna solve for x. So when y equals zero, x minus two has to equal zero and x minus six also has to equal zero. Okay, remember everything because zero times whatever is zero, whatever times zero is also zero. Add two to both sides, you get x equals two. Add six to both sides, you get x equals six. So those are my two x-intercepts, two and six. Now, to find the axis of symmetry, I add those together and I divide by two. Two plus six divided by two is eight divided by two, or x equals four. Okay, it doesn't equal x equals four, it just is. All right, so why don't you guys do B, C, D, E, F. Would you say you're done? Awesome. Set both those pieces equal to zero. X equals zero, x plus four equals zero, x equals zero, and x equals negative four. Find the average, add them together. Zero minus four divided by two is negative four divided by two, x equals negative two. C, remember what I said about this negative sign in the previous lesson? It doesn't really matter because what you do is zero divided by negative one, still equals zero, so you set both of these equal to zero. X plus three equals zero, and X minus five equals zero. Track three, add five, X equals negative three, and X equals five. All right, negative three plus five divided by two. Two divided by two is one. Okay, that's it. All right, let's look at D. You're going to set both of those equal to zero. X minus three equals zero, X minus eight equals zero. Add three and add eight to both sides. Take the average, three plus eight is what? 11, 11 divided by two is 5.5, or you can just leave it as 11 halves, or you can make it five and a half, whatever floats your boat. It doesn't matter, they all mathematically equal the same. Here, you remember what happens if you square something? The square doesn't matter, the two doesn't matter. Zero equals two times x minus five squared. 
So zero equals zero divided by two is two. So x minus five squared equals zero. Square rooted, x minus five squared is zero equals zero. So all we do is here is set x minus five equals zero. Add the five from both sides, x equals five. That means it just touches the graph. There's only one x-intercept. Since there's only one, that is your axis of symmetry. Problem F, same thing as said before, whatever that is is the thing that's equal to zero, the part of the function, so x plus two equals zero. You're going to subtract two from both sides, x equals negative two, and it's just touching the x-axis of negative two, meaning there's only one x-intercept there, and that um, is where the axis of symmetry goes through, and it's x equals negative two. Okay. to the next problem, number three. This says two in your packet. It really should be number three. That's the only mistake I made. I'm happy. It says a quadratic function has the axis of symmetry of negative, x equals negative three. And one of its x-intercepts is four. Find the other x-intercept. Go. See if you can do this without any hints. All right. So let's use our equation. Our equation, we should say, is the axis of symmetry equals the average of the two x-intercepts, right? So x-intercept 1, the purple one, the blue one, plus the purple f1. And you're going to divide it by 2. See if that helps you out. Gives you a little hint on how to solve this. All right, well, we said the axis of symmetry is negative 3. That equals 4 plus whatever this is. We'll just call this x divided by 2. Now you solve for x. Use your algebra. All right, that was enough time. You're going to multiply both sides here by 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. These two cancel out. You're going to subtract 4 from both sides. x equals negative 10. So my other x-intercept is negative 10. You want to check your answer. Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is indeed negative 10. You're just working your way backwards um, against the stuff that we just did. Right. That's pretty easy, wasn't it? Ready to turn it up just a little bit? Let's go up a little bit of a level. What this says is axes is symmetry. All right. One of the last main concepts we're doing. Um, we got this concept and pretty much just this concept. It says when a quadratic functions are given in expanded form, that's ax squared plus bx plus c. For example, 2x squared plus 9x plus 4. It doesn't matter what these numbers are in front. We cannot identify the x-intercepts. We don't know right away. We have also seen some quadratic functions do not have any x-intercepts. For instance, this one, there is no x-intercepts. Um, we therefore need a method to find the axis of symmetry with the function without using these x-intercepts. X-intercepts are great. That makes it nice and easy, but you're not always going to have them. So this is how you're going to do it. Suppose the quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c. It has an axis of symmetry of a equals h. Okay, a equals h is just going to be, like I said before, your axis of symmetry. Let a and b be two points on that graph, f of x, which are d units from either side of the axis of symmetry. So a and b are, they have the same y value, and they're also the same distance from the axis of symmetry. They just don't happen to be on the x-intercept. Um, be the symmetry of the function, they must have the same y coordinate. So they have the same y coordinate, they just have different x coordinates. So we're going to be able to find out, through using this method, an equation. And that equation is coming up right now. So our equation that we're going to use is b over 2a, negative b over 2a. Okay, that is the equation. I don't know why I didn't come up here. So the equation for this, to find the axis of symmetry of this function, is going to be negative b over 2a. Some 
Um, I can go over the proof of this, but we really are short on time with all this shorting classes now and stuff. So I just want to get right into it, right? So find the equation, use the stuff I just told you. That three should be correct. Oops, sorry. That's one. All right, did you use the um, formula? Let's see. AX squared plus BX plus C. All right, our A is three. Our B is four. And our C is negative five. Guess what? You don't care about C. C doesn't matter. That could be anything. Because all C does is move something up and down, moves it vertically. So that's actually not going to change the horizontal um, distance. And your axis of symmetry is going to remain the same, whether this is negative 5, whether it's positive 5, whether it's a billion. Because all you're doing is moving your graph up and down. It still is the same axis of symmetry. So anyway, back on tangent. Your formula is negative b over 2a. You've probably seen this somewhere before. Negative 4 over 2, negative 4 over 2 times 3, negative 4 over 6, which is negative 2 thirds. There you go. This right here is your axis of symmetry formula. All right, axis of symmetry here, x equals negative 2 thirds. All right, and that's all there is to it. So you got to remember this formula. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? All right, what I want you guys to do is problem number four, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Up here, A x squared plus B x plus C, x equals negative B over two A, in case you guys forgot what I just told you 30 seconds ago. I'll do the first one with you. If there's nothing in front of here, the A is one. So in this case, your A is one, your B is six. So it's negative b, negative 6, divided by 2 times a, which is 1. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. x equals negative 3 is my axis of symmetry. All right, continue on. Oh, this is a fast lesson. I like this lesson. Could have done this one sooner. You got one and you got negative eight. Negative, negative eight divided by two is negative eight. Negative, negative eight divided by two. Two negatives is a positive. That becomes eight divided by two, which is x equals four. All right, right here, C. A is two, B is five. Negative five divided by two times two, negative five divided by four, and that's your answer. Negative five fourths equals x. That is your axis of symmetry. And we're gonna use these to find our vertices in the next chapter. Negative one is a, b is three. Negative three divided by two times negative one is negative three divided by negative two, or x equals three halves. x equals 1.5, x equals one and a half, all acceptable. Of All right, now look at this one. There is no x. So that means that a is 2. If I was going to do plus bx, it'd be plus 0 times x. So your b is actually going to be 0. If there's no x, the b is 0. If there's no x squared, it's not a quadratic, so you can't solve it. All right, so 0 divided by 2 times 2, negative 0 divided by 4 x equals zero. Can that be true? Of course. It just means your axis of symmetry is your y-axis. Right. right here, a is negative five, b is seven, negative seven divided by two times negative five, negative seven divided by negative ten, and you get x equals seven divided by ten, or seven tenths, um, x equals zero point seven. G. A is negative 3, B is negative 1. All right, negative, negative 1 divided by 2 divided, uh, times negative 3. You get negative 
negative, negative three negatives is a negative. So it's gonna be one six, so x equals one over six. A negative one over six, sorry. These two negatives cancel out, and then you have your negative in front. So. Right here, ah, oh, they trick you. Your A, it's not, ooh, it, it tricked me with my colors. All right, your A right here is next to the x squared. Your B is next to your x. So my colors are wrong, but this is right. Negative 10 divided by two times negative three is negative 10 divided by negative six, which is positive 10 over six or five thirds, all right? Last one, why? A is one eighth, B is one. Two times one eighth is two over eight or one fourth. One times four over one, when you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal, so that becomes negative four, x equals negative three. That's pretty easy. Three more problems. All right, use the x-intercepts to find the axis of symmetry of y equals um, x plus 2 and x minus 5. And, that's not five. and b says check your answers by rewriting the function form in this function and evaluate. Oh, I forgot to animate. Oh, oh well. All right, so... Let's see exactly what this means. Don't pay attention to this stuff. I messed it up. Um, y equals x plus 2 times x minus 5. So we're going to find the x-intercepts. We're going to set both of these equal to 0, right? x plus 2 equals 0. x minus 5 equals 0. Subtract 2, add 5. You get x equals negative 2 and x equals 5, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two numbers, add them together and divide by two. Negative two plus five divided by two is three divided by two. So x should equal three halves, all right? Got it? I'm trying to block this answer right here. You can't see it. All right, you can see it on me though. Next way, I didn't animate this correctly, so um, the answer is actually here. So we're gonna rewrite this function form so you have your original. You're going to distribute x times x is x squared. x times negative five is minus five x plus two x. Two times negative five is minus 10. Combine like terms, negative five plus two x squared minus three x minus 10. So this gives us our other form that we're looking for, okay? In this form, our a is one, our b is negative three. So I didn't give you that much. Um, negative, negative three divided by two times one. Negative and a negative is a um, positive, three halves. And look what x equals. x equals three halves. x equals three halves. So either way gives you the same answer. It's just like two different rows to get to the same place. Got it? This stuff's easy, isn't it? All right, why don't you guys try problem number six? Right here, this is six, it says five. I checked everything, double checked everything, triple checked everything, I still miss these things. Quadratic function f of x equals ax squared plus six x minus four has an axis of symmetry of x equals negative two. Find the value of a. Let's go, use your formula to do the step. All Check out. Okay, 
Okay? A, B, right? So, you plug in the door formula, negative B over 2 times A. So, negative, negative 6 over 2 times A equals our axis of symmetry, which is negative 2. So now we're going to solve for A here. And you can multiply both sides by what? Negative times negative is a positive 6 over 2A. What can I do next? Divide both sides. Uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So this reduces to 3 over A equals negative 2. Multiply both sides by A. Ah. What happens here is, cancels out. You get 3 equals negative 2A. To solve for A, you divide both sides by negative 2. And A equals 3 divided by negative 2. So I could say A equals negative 3 halves. So my equation is f of x equals negative 3 halves x squared plus 6x minus 4. If you want to check your answer, which I didn't do here, you can. Um, and all I used here was negative b over 2a equals my um, axis of symmetry. All right, so I want to check my answer, which you don't have to, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, negative 6 divided by 2 times negative 3 halves. All right, 2 times negative 3 halves is negative 6 over um, negative 3, which equals Oops, where my negative in front. Wait, negative. Uh, uh oh. How come that doesn't work? Negative, negative six. What? Oh, should that be a minus six? Can I mess this whole problem up? Let me check my book. Look at that. By me checking my answer, I realized one of two things. Either my answer is wrong. Or something else is wrong. This is embarrassing. Let's see. Do, 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 do. So when I go check my answer, you can try to start the next one if you'd like. Axis of symmetry. Problem number five. Six. Plus six X. So this right here should have been a plus. And that means that this negative should have made this a positive on both sides. Making the answer here a positive 3 halves. Because if this is positive 3 halves, that's how I get my negative 3 halves. Aha! Must not check my answer. Got it? I put too many negatives. One, way, one, not way too many negatives. One too many negatives. All right, so what you guys are going to do is problem number seven. Oh, I'm doing so good. I was on such a roll, too. All right, this is problem six. Six F6. Must not have checked my answer in the back of the book, too. All right, so you guys are doing this problem right quick. Let's go. Now, find the axis of symmetry. Comment on your answer. Once again, you're just doing the A and B. I'll do the first one with you. Negative 5 divided by 2 times 2. Negative 5 fourths. is three halves. That's right. All right. A, B, 2 and 5. Negative 5 divided by 2 times 2. X equals negative 5. Whoa! Good answer. Check right here. A, B, negative 5. Oh, look at that. They're all the same, even though all the equations are different. Look why, though. Because our A's and our B's are the same in each one. The only thing that's different is our C. So for the quadratic function, a squared plus b, ax squared plus bx plus c, the axis of symmetry a equals negative b over 2a depends on a and b but not c. Explain this results. Well, 
they're all the same up here, right? If you looked at the graph right here, these are the graphs. This is seven. This is the one that has the one. This is the one that has negative four. Notice these numbers just shift my graph up and down. So the value of C only affects the vertical translation of the graph. Okay, it does not affect the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the same for all three graphs. Yeah. And that's it. Pretty simple. And that right there is going to conclude relatively correct, relatively easy, um, axis of symmetry lesson. Um, this is going to connect directly to our next lesson, which is going to be um, 6 point G on the vertex, or the vertices. You're going to use your axis of symmetry to set up finding your vertices. All right, so until the next lesson, I will talk to you guys and see you guys.